Get my mark. Hey everyone, I'm Sam. Um, I'm a product manager for Dell in the uh, Apex Cloud Platform uh, business unit. And I'm here to talk about, believe it or not, Apex Cloud Platforms. So you've heard our ground to cloud story. I always get this reverse, so bear with me here. You've heard our ground to cloud story of taking our best of breed Dell software uh, defined storage technologies, bringing them up into the cloud for consumption there. And I'm here today to talk about the opposite, from uh, cloud to ground. So what does that mean? So first off, we've seen you know, in interviewing customers, looking at research, looking at studies that we've done, we've seen a lot of challenges to bringing cloud to ground technologies, bringing platforms from the cloud to on-prem. What do those challenges look like? We've got you know, unpredictable costs. So not knowing what it might be today, not knowing, well, if I got to burst into the cloud, what's that going to take from a cost perspective? Management complexity. We see that customers have, I think it's, I'm going to butcher this number, but it's, it's over two. It's something like 2.4 public cloud vendors per customer. So if I'm a customer, I'm looking at multiple cloud vendors. It might be Azure, might be AWS, might be Google, might be OpenShift or, or VMware. But I've got a number of cloud vendors. That comes with management complexity. vSphere and Azure, pretty different stuff. You know, at the core, they're the same, but managing those things takes a serious skill set and often a number of FTEs. How do we get past that? Cloud inconsistencies. So things like, well, if I have to define an SLA here, um, it might be different. Oh, we lost my screen. Am I, am I okay? We good? <coughs> okay. Can I keep going? Yes. All right. Um, Cloud inconsistencies. These things are different from cloud to cloud. We know that they're different from cloud to ground. Skill, skills gaps, like I said, hey, if you're gonna manage um, Azure, can manage OpenShift, can manage VMware, that's likely different staffs. And then finally, limited visibility. Well, how do I know what I've got where? I don't have a central place for all of those things. So how do we solve those things? So what I'm gonna introduce today, and we've had a number of discussions about these, a number of presentations, is our Apex Cloud Platform. What does that mean? What is an Apex Cloud Platform? Um, and what we're doing, really, with a cloud to ground is we're taking those cloud vendors and their platforms, like Red Hat OpenShift, Azure, and of course, familiar VMware, and bringing those down into a kind of unified system, the Apex Cloud Platform. Before I get into some of the details on that, what we're trying to do, what I call the three Cs here, all of those problems that we saw earlier, management complexities, skills gaps, et cetera, we're boiling them down and solving them via a few different things, the three Cs. Choice, you know, what, what are my vendors? I've got those two point whatever vendors on average, um, cloud, uh, public cloud vendors, and I need to have choice. I need to be able to continue to leverage those but in a consistent manner. So consistency, how do I take the same building blocks, apply them, to my multiple cloud vendor platforms on-prem and do it in a consistent manner, where it's they're managed consistently, they're deployed consistently, serviced consistently, et cetera. And then finally, control. So I have these different cloud platforms. How can I control them in the similar way? So that if I have an FTE, and I have an FTE going from platform to platform, they know like, okay, I gotta replace a disk. How can I do that on this platform and on that platform? Same, same thing, same control. So what is an Apex Cloud Platform? Um, and we were talking earlier off camera here, um, I came from the VxRail business group beforehand. Um, now I'm on the Apex Cloud Platform business group and the reason that's pertinent is we are taking the same lessons that we've been building with VxRail over the last eight years and applying them to our multi-cloud portfolio. You'll see on the left, the Apex Cloud Platform Foundation software. This is the, our big value prop right here. This is the meat of what makes our things consistent, whether you're getting a Azure Apex Cloud Platform. There we go, cool. Yeah. Whether you're getting, that makes it easier for me to talk to as well. Whether you're getting an Azure Apex Cloud flat Platform, a Red Hat OpenShift, or a familiar VMware Cloud Platform, you're getting the same kind of controls built into those vendor stacks. Not gonna drain that thing on the left yet, we'll talk about that in a little bit. It is some of our secret sauce, but our other secret sauce in the recipe here is a Dell Enterprise SDS. You just heard a lot about PowerFlex, about its scalability, 
about how open it is um, and its resiliency in our previous session here, but we're leveraging the same SDS in our Apex Cloud Platform on-prem. So we're taking that, we're taking these softwares and pairing them with PowerEdge. <coughs> of course, we're familiar with PowerEdge. We're in, what, 16th generation of PowerEdge right now. We'll be building out, of course, into 17G and beyond. But we have our uh, PowerEdge with our fourth gen Intel Xeon processors. We're building that extreme resiliency, the best of breed uh, servers on the planet into ACPs. ACPs, by the way, if I shorten that, and I do it a lot, that's an Apex Cloud Platform ACP. So bear with me there. So we're, really, we're taking software to manage, software to serve your storage, and best of breed hardware, putting it in a very familiar box and saying this is an ACP. Like we've built with VxRail for the last eight years, we're doing that same thing, taking that same level of awesomeness and building it into an Apex Cloud Platform. So what, what do common building blocks give us? What do we get by saying, hey, we've got these building blocks, these same things we're using for every ACP. We get that consistent MNO. So again, like your MNO strategy, whether it's uh, dial home or whether it's swapping a disk, building a volume, that MNO is going to be consistent across your different vendor platforms. Really cool stuff. Flexibility. So now that you have ACPs and you can deploy them in the same manner, you've got VMware, you have um, OpenShift and Azure, you can deploy those um, flexibly and have different, <laughs> sorry, uh, different deployments for different workloads. Finally, or not finally, continuing, your shared SDS. So your shared SDS is your PowerFlex. It's the same linear, scalable thing. Same thing that you just saw um, with the ground and cloud strategy. We're doing that same thing with PowerFlex SDS inside ACPs. Of course, embedded security features and uniform experiences for support services. So things that you know, a lot of customers consider table stakes that you might not get with other multi-cloud um, offerings. We're bringing that all into common building blocks. And in the future, common building blocks will allow us to do even cooler stuff. So cloud platform foundation software. Um, again, coming from a VxRail background here, a lot of folks remember this as VxRail Manager. We've taken those same lessons learned, built them into the cloud platform foundation software, and we're doing the same cool stuff. So day two management, full stack lifecycle, fleet management, APIs, integrated support, node image, management, configuration, and day one stuff, all of that is being built into your vendor's control plane. So like before with VxRail, where we had VxRail Manager built directly into vCenter, we're doing the same thing with Azure Portal, with OpenShift, and with our VMware ACP. So all this cool stuff that you're going to use to do things like your storage LCM, your node LCM, your patching. All of that will be built in directly into the vendor software, uh, into the vendor console with the Cloud Platform Foundation software. Of course, you know what I always call uh, mowing the lawn. You know, mowing the lawn is the 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 day to day stuff of IT. Um, doing things LCM. LCM is a is a thing that we all have to do, and we can't afford to have systems that we just leave in place un LCM'd until we buy a new one. So with our LCM operation, we are continuously engineering patches, upgrades um, across the spectrum of ACPs. So you get this continuous integration where we are doing that work for you. You're not going out there testing a version, testing a patch uh, for your system. We are doing that in the back end. So you know when you deploy a bundle update to your ACP for OpenShift, ACP for Azure, ACP for VMware, you're getting a consistently engineered thing, uh, a consistently engineered update that you can apply, apply with, without fear. So what does a continuously validated state look like? My compatriot Michael here will walk us through some of the demos. He's the smart guy. I'm the talkative one. Um, what does an uh, update look like? So we've got a, a current known good state, a KGS. And this is an example on our Azure Stack um, ACP. You can see that we've got uh, software levels, we've got hardware levels in there, HBA firmwares, HBA drivers, all of these things are included with our bundle updates. 
as we progress via that bundle update, our updates will provide uh, the patch level, the known good version to your next known good state uh, from software to hardware. And a lot of times it's just a, it's a disk in HBA firmware that popped up and we do that continuous testing so you don't have to. From there, we also support patching. You don't have to do it all at once. You don't have to do everything at once. We can do an emergency patch. And we do this all through that um, ACP Cloud Platform Foundation software. So um, the backbone, uh, or the, the backbone of our storage for ACPs, um, and our ACPs have a number of different storage options. Um, so you know, disk levels, uh, SLAs, performance. Um, it's all based on our SDS platform, PowerFlex. It's got that same crazy scalability. It'll deliver crazy <coughs> performance numbers that I'm not going to put on screen because I saw it happen last time. Uh, <laughs> But we can really, really scale. We can be linearly, linearly, it's a tough word to say. We can linearly scale, uh, not only for performance, but for resilience. You can start from a few nodes, grow to hundreds, and share that SDS inside of your ACP to your different um, ACP nodes. I have a question about the ACP nodes. Please. It sounds like it's basically offering a standardized version of compute. Like this is basically IX, right? If I am consuming other cloud services that are not core IaaS, I'm using, say, I built an application that uses Lambda, the API gateway, S3, and DynamoDB. Am I going to be able to manage that with this solution, or does that fall outside the bounds of an ACP? Can we push that to when I get up? Because just what, what I'm going to show you once in just a few minutes here is actually, <coughs> I'll take you inside of those so you can actually see the interfaces, and I think it'll make a little more sense. OK. So sure. we'll, we'll just revisit your question shortly. Sounds good. And I'd like to ask a more product manager-y question. Sure. I may. So uh, you it. mentioned you know integrations with like Red Hat, mm -hmm. Microsoft, which I assume is Azure Stack HCI, yep. and VMware, which is probably like Cloud Foundation or something like it. How closely do you have to work with like your peers at those companies on the integration? And how does the, if at all, does the recently terminated contract between Dell and VMware affect that relationship? Sure, so uh, to answer the first part of the question, I mean, our, um, and hopefully folks on the line heard that as well. Um, to answer the first part of the question, our PDM teams work with our partner organizations every single day. I mean, we are constantly co-developing, uh, sharing ideas, uh, building these out in the same manner um, across our ACPs every day. So we have folks working with, uh, like our, our Azure Stack team, for instance, are constantly engaged with Microsoft on upcoming releases, um, upcoming strategies, et cetera. We're always working with our partner orgs. Um, now as to the second question, um, VMware, you know, so what we are doing here with ACPs is providing our customers uh, a choice. And we, we're giving our customers a choice that no matter what uh, cloud platform they want to pick up, whether it's one or many, uh, they're going to be able to do that with our multi-cloud offerings and with Apex Cloud Platform. Um, as to the contract, um, nothing changes for us. You know, we continue to develop um, our you know, relationship with Broadcom is strong. We'll continue to develop our HCPs and VxRail platforms. Um, so really for us, nothing changes. So finally, um, just to kind of summarize what's inside an Apex Cloud Platform, because I want to be really blunt about it. Um, I, I find that helps sometimes. You know, it's a, it's a box. And inside that box, we have our best of breed stuff. We have our partner, partner Cloud Platform stack, which is a tongue twister. Um, so again, VMware, continually, continuously building with VMware, um, Azure Stack, and Red Hat OpenShift. We're going to be, we're all in with those folks. We're going to continue to do that. Um, our Apex Cloud Platform Foundation software, the same thing we've been doing for years and the same thing our customers have given, given us tremendous feedback on uh, for almost the last decade. Uh, that software will give you that automated m and and that consistent m and no matter which ACP you pick up, one or many. Uh, latest generation PowerEdge. I mean, <laughs> I don't know what else can be said about PowerEdge, can't be beat. 
Uh, and then finally, the Dell SDS. So that PowerFlex, uh, PowerFlex software that gives us an extremely scalable um, and performant uh, storage backplane for our ACPs. When you buy an ACP, uh, no matter the flavor, these are the things you're getting. So um, just to kind of wrap up here, um, what we have done or what we've attempted to do is really remove those barriers. And I'm gonna skip ahead here a little bit just in the interest of time. Where we saw those uh, challenges before, these are the things we're checking off. You know, we're making sure that our customers can pick up um, their different cloud platforms, do it in a repeatable manner, do it as fast as possible, um, do it in a scalable and consistent manager, and or, or <laughs> scalable and consistent way, and finally manage it all in the same direction. 